What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube and today I've got some football focus. The Pittsburgh Steelers played the Jacksonville Jaguars in week two of the 2022 NFL preseason last night. I apologize for the delay in this review, I usually do it right after the game, but my birthday weekend was this weekend on Friday. I had a film premiere to go to last night, I got home around midnight, watched the first half of the game at like 2 in the morning, went to bed, got up super early this morning, watched the second half of the game via the uh, NFL app on the Jaguars feed, and uh, bringing you guys the review now, pretty tired. Uh, thankfully, this is going to be a quick review, there's not a whole lot to highlight, uh, it was a 16-15 game. Not a whole lot of offense, not a whole lot of positive to really highlight for us. It's kind of hard to give an accurate review of standout stats. Like last week, we obviously scored in the 30s, and I think it was 29 or 32 or something like that. Pittsburgh scored a lot last week, and everyone looked really good. Uh, one of the big downsides last week was the offensive line. It looked much, much worse this week. Um, that has partly to do with the fact that Jacksonville's front three is really good, all, all first-round picks. So they've got a, a stacked defensive uh, you know, front line, which caused us a lot of trouble. But even the backups were uh, getting in our backfield quite a bit. Uh, so not much to talk about as far as quarterback protection or running the ball in a positive manner. Pittsburgh does get the win 16-15, to like I said. That's pretty immaterial. Uh, win, win doesn't matter in preseason. But this was our kind of our closest thing to address rehearsal. Uh, week two is kind of the midpoint. That's where all the starters get to play. Quarterback stat-wise, Mitch Trubisky, uh, he played three series. Uh, didn't get a chance to do a whole lot because, again, the offensive line stunk. Five for eight for 60 yards, uh, not bad. I think that his shining moments come from escaping sacks. Uh, the second he gets the ball hiked to him, he has to do magic tricks trying to get out of the backfield without getting sacked. Uh, so just being able to avoid some of the sacks that he did remind me of a young Ben Roethlisberger. Um, ben was more the strong guy, where Mitch is more the elusive guy, but... I think Kenny Pickett overall is the quicker, kind of uh, better guy on his feet, uh, but Mitch Trubisky is the more elusive one, so that kind of shows their differences there. Uh, again, 5 for 8, 60 yards, nothing terrible, nothing great. Uh, didn't get to do a whole lot. They were quick series. Again, most of that was the offensive line, not giving Mitch a lot of time. Did make a nice uh, pass to Chase Claypool. Chase went on a... Uh, a slot um, play and got down the sideline, got a nice one-on-one -on -one catch. Uh, Deontay got a catch early as well. He was playing tonight from Mitch. Mitch also got out there for like an 11-yard run on an uh, escape sack to a scramble, so he so he did well on that one. Um, sorry for the fridge running in the background. Um, Kenny Pickett came in with the second team. This is going to be one of the stories now to look into next week. Kenny Pickett came out of camp entering the preseason as the clear number three guy. And after his performance last week, he has uh, clearly now overstepped Mason Rudolph for the number two spot and got a bunch of first team reps in practice and played with part of the first team this week. So this is very interesting now. What's going to happen? Is Pickett going to really rise from the number three to the number one by the end of preseason? He's very close. He came in for two series uh, at the end of the first half, playing with a lot of the starters still. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the same starters were in the game. Kenny Pickett was six for seven, 76 yards and a touchdown. Came in and brought new life into the offense immediately. Um, the first series was, was kind of a quick three and out situation uh, based on a holding call that stalled a drive. Second series, Pickett was, uh, you know, had the best series of the entire day. Came down the field, found Deontay Johnson on a nice 24 yard play, found Fryermuth in the middle of the field for two nice first down plays, then found Deontay Johnson again in the end zone for a nice touchdown pass, which was called back by a holding. And then on the next play, he found a, uh, a swing pass to Benny Snell, who caught the ball, got in the end zone for a touchdown. So Pickett threw two touchdowns. One was called back. The second one stood. On the best drive of the day, Pickett looked really good. It was a, uh, a two-minute offense kind of thing. They had to go about mm, 70 yards, and uh, Pickett did that with ease. A very good drive. Uh, so Pickett, I'll play Trubisky in this. If you look at two drives versus three, um, playing with the starters, Pickett was the best tonight. He outplayed Trubisky, and I think oh, also outplayed Rudolph based on who was in the game at the time. So uh, Pickett had a really good game again overall in spite of what he had to deal with, and it makes you wonder, is he going to be in the conversation against Trubisky for the starter? Mason obviously is out now. It's down to Trubisky and Pickett, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Pickett has, again, a new life on this offense, but... When you're under such a bad offensive line, do you really want to have a rookie going out there starting week one, or do you want to go with the veteran that also can get away from sacks a little better? So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, running, 
I don't have much to say about the running backs. I was looking forward to the running back battle this week because we have like five guys going for the last two spots behind um, behind Najee Harris, and uh, they didn't get to show anything. The leading rusher in this game uh, had 11 yards for us. That was a uh, a jet sweep for Steven Sims. He had a nice catch today, and he had a nice jet sweep for 11 yards. Good for him. But yeah, a wide receiver on a jet sweep is our biggest runner of the day. Our number two runner of the day was Mitch Trubisky with the 10-yard run that he had. So running backs got to show nothing today. Uh, they didn't look very good, but it was not their fault. That, once again, is the offensive line. Uh, Benny Snell started the game, did not do anything running the ball, but again, not entirely his fault. Did catch two nice passes, including a touchdown catch. So receiving the ball better than he usually does, that's not something he usually excels at. Uh, but he got the start, so it's looking like he's uh, sliding himself into the number two spot, even though he hasn't played, didn't play all that well today. Uh, the number three guy they played was uh, Jalen Warren, who uh, also didn't do much running the ball. I think he had one nice like five-yard run, and that was it, uh, running the ball. But receiving, he had, I have him written down here, has three catches for 24 yards. Um, probably the best receiving running back we have on this team. He and McFarlane are kind of right there. Uh, I like Jalen Warren. As long as he's not fumbling, I think he belongs on this team. I think he has an energy that a lot of guys don't have. He and McFarlane are similar, but I think Warren is further along in spite of being an undrafted free agent than McFarlane has been. McFarlane did play as the fourth running back uh, on this team. Didn't do much. Did have one nice kick return for maybe about 30 yards, uh, but did not do much on the uh, running or receiving side of the ball. Um, Mateo Durant had a seven-yard run. That's about it for him. Max Borgie came in and played a little bit. Didn't do much. Uh, but again, the offensive line is the story here. These guys played terribly, and they played deep into the third quarter. They kept the starters in there because they were not satisfactory. <clears throat> to Mike Tomlin's liking, Dan Moore Jr. had a miserable game. He was up and down last week, some good, some bad. He was horrible this week. James Daniels had a really bad game last week, had another bad game this week. Not quite as bad, but bad. Also, I think had a penalty for holding. Uh, Chukso Korafor, I believe, was called for a holding penalty. These guys do not look good. Joe Haig uh, is a backup, but a veteran backup, and got beat on a play for a tackle in the backfield. <clears throat> when your running backs are showing, I think Benny Snell had three carries for negative three yards. Uh, I think McFarland had one yard. Um, yeah, Jalen Warren, I think, had, had three or four yards. It, it was miserable. This offensive line is just not even getting off the ball. Like It's, it's ridiculous how slow and how, how often in the backfield these guys are. Again, Trubisky and Pickett both could have been sacked like three or four different times. Um, they, they started to change the play calling for Pickett and later on a lot for Mason Rudolph to avoid sacks. They were literally getting, they were scampering out to the sides. They were, they were getting the ball hiked and literally running bootlegs or like, like po uh, pocket, uh, um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Shifting the pockets just to get the ball out of their hands. They were having Mason throw these quick little three- and four-yard outs to get away from all the blitzing rushers. They had to change the play calling because the line was so bad. And again, in the third quarter, the starters were still playing and still getting beat by Jacksonville's second team. That is very, very alarming. What I was pretty scared about last week, I am five times more scared about this week. This offensive line needs a change immediately. I don't care if that's benching somebody. I don't care if that's signing somebody new. This line is going to give us fits all season long. Um, wide receiving, we had some good stuff. Deontay caught a few things, including a touchdown that was called back. Claypool caught the nice slot ball uh, down the sidelines. Pickens caught a nice ball, uh, one or two out of Miles Boykin. Uh, the leaders today, once again, Tyler Vaughns. I'm impressed by Tyler Vaughns. He had two nice catches last week, including the game-winning touchdown. Here he had four catches, 56 yards. I liked a lot of what he did this week. Again, he's... Uh, He's a, I think, second-year player out of USC. Uh, has a nice stature, um, pretty strong, had good, good strong hands catches. Uh, makes guys miss a lot. He had that um, broken tackle for the touchdown last week. Had two other plays on simple outs today where he caught the ball, made a guy miss, and cut back. Really nice broken tackles out of Tyler Vaughn's. Nice guy to look at. I don't think he has a chance of making the roster. Uh, I would like to look at him for wide receiver six, but I, I like him overall, and I think he's going to do something cool somewhere. Uh, Jalen Warren, again, one of the leaders tonight, 3 for 24, uh, played pretty well. Gunnar Olszewski had a couple nice catches, had a really good play at one point where he caught the ball on uh, like four, fourth down and seven or something, 
actually was had guys in the backfield running at him already, made a few guys miss, went for a nice spin move, almost got the fourth down conversion, and then fumbled the ball because it was too loose after the spin move. He didn't tuck it back into his body. So made a really nice play, but then a really bad play at the end with the fumble um, that uh, turned over on downs for us. So Gunner being out there at receiver is good, but you got to tuck that ball away, just like Jalen Warren last week. Um, the touchdowns, again, the one went from uh, Benny Snell, or to Benny Snell, and the other one was Tyler Sneed. I didn't read Mason Rudolph's stats. He came in for the second half and played against the second and third team of Jacksonville. Really good, good, solid overall day. 17 of 21, 127 yards and a touchdown. He had by far the most time. Again, uh, Pickett played two series, Trubisky played three, Rudolph played the entire second half. 17 of 21. Good conservative play. Uh, nothing really bad. He did miss uh, at least twice on Connor Hayward, who was quiet today. Connor had like one, I think one catch, but a couple times he got missed. Um, missed a few times by Rudolph. But yeah, 17 to 21, uh, a touchdown and no turnovers. Pretty solid for Rudolph playing with the backups. Uh, he's had two solid games in a row. Nothing special. He's not showing you any growth to his game, but he is playing a solid conservative game and completing his passes to the outside pretty easily. Uh, like I said, they, they were using a lot of offense with him doing simple out routes. Uh, he was shifting the pocket to one side, throwing dumb passes, and completing them nicely and letting the receivers make plays. So a uh, solid day for Mason, but clearly he is behind Pickett now. And uh, at the very most here is going for the third quarterback spot. So either he's going to be the third quarterback or he could be uh, traded. And especially we're going to see what happens with Chris Oladukin next week, who's going to play in the throwaway game next week. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, defensively, not too bad. Still got some running uh, run stoppage issues. Our middle linebackers are not really keeping their gaps, and we're not getting a ton of pressure from the front front line. Um, TJ Watt got a sack tonight. No big surprise there. He's in a league of his own. <clears throat> uh, the other sack of the night was DeMarvin Leal playing with the second team. Got to the quarterback early a few times and uh, didn't get the sack, though, just like, just like last week. Did finally get a sack on the uh, third-string quarterback tonight. Good to see Leal get a nice sack in the fourth quarter. <clears throat> I like the way he's been playing out there. He's a pretty solid, solid guy. Leal has provided a lot of nice depth for us uh, getting to the quarterback. He's not been on the stat sheet very much. This was his first sack, but I like his presence out there. He's got a lot of energy, and he's getting uh, from the inside into the quarterback. Um, what else we got? Yeah, Wad and Leal with the sacks. Justin Lane with the interception. That was the third-string quarterback throwing it right to Justin Lane. Uh, but it was a low ball. Justin Lane had to go down and scoop it up off the ground. That was a nice catch. He also got a good return on, on that interception. Uh, he played in the fourth quarter with the, the fourth stringers. So he's not. Uh, he played behind several guys tonight, including Chris Steele from uh, USC and DeMonte KZ. So I think he's going to be cut off the team. I don't think he's going to make it. But nice pick and return for him here. He's probably going to get a chance somewhere else because he was a high pick. And he's uh, he does make plays occasionally. So he may get a chance. Uh, somewhere else, but I think it's it's his time in Pittsburgh has come to an end. Uh, Mark Robinson played pretty well tonight. All the inside linebackers on this team have the same problem. Devin Bush, Robert Spillane, Mark Robinson, Buddy Johnson, uh, to an extent Miles Jack even. Uh, really good downhill runners, good solid tacklers, good speed, good power. They're good hitters. They tackle the running backs well. They get off the edge when they blitz, but they cannot cover to save their lives. That's a problem with all of our inside linebackers. Uh, Mark Robinson was a good tackler last week. Made a few nice plays, but was really bad in coverage. Tonight, he really wasn't in coverage too much. I didn't see him covering anybody, uh, but he was making a few nice hits. He had one really big hit uh, down there tonight. So pretty good game for Mark Robinson. He's got an outside shot of making this team. I don't know uh, what his chances are. He's on the bubble, but he played pretty well tonight. DeMonte KZ played a lot tonight. <clears throat> Coming back off his brief injury last week, I like him a lot. He is a nice veteran piece for us, a good backup playing that kind of uh, corner-slash-safety role. Uh, he was very involved around the ball tonight. Pretty good in coverage. Made a few nice tackles off the edge. He's reading. Uh, he, he read a uh, running back play tonight. He also read a play um, on a screen pass. I think also had one in special teams as well. So if he's making tackles there, that's going to help. Uh, KZ has been very consistent, one of our best uh, secondary players, in my opinion. Um, Terrell Edmonds played pretty good tonight. Got a few tackles uh, in the uh, among the first string. Another guy that's fighting for a spot that's probably not going to get one here but played pretty well tonight was Donovan Steiner. I like his work tonight. We did not notice a whole lot of um, who is the pocket rocket uh, corner that we have. Trey Norwood. Uh, Trey Norwood did not seem as confident, comfortable tonight. Missed a few tackles, was out of place a little bit. 
But uh, Donovan Steiner, the other uh, slot corner slash safety, played pretty well in uh, tackling. Didn't do a whole lot in coverage. He was there once or twice in coverage. Uh, played pretty well as a tackler tonight. Also, Jannard Avery, the backup linebacker, the uh, th- three slash four. Him and Tuska are fighting for the third outside linebacker spot from Cleveland. Jannard Avery played pretty well tonight. Uh, several good tackles off the edge. I think he had a batted ball as well. And he got a few tackles on the running back and also got off the edge and pressured the quarterbacks a few times, which caused some errant throws. So not a big stat sheet filler tonight, but did get some nice pressures for Jannard Avery. Uh, special teams-wise, uh, Nick Skiba, second week in a row with a field goal. Um, Boswell missed his field goal early on uh, with the first team. Trubisky did lead us down to a field goal attempt, and uh, Boswell did miss it. But Skiba made his field goal from uh, 45-plus. Uh, second week in a row that he's made a field goal, so he's not going to be on the team, obviously, that that is Boswell's spot. He's been re-signed to a contract, but Skiba's played pretty well in the preseason. Also, Presley Harvin, he had a kickoff uh, after a uh, safety. Mason Rudolph threw the ball out of the end zone to no wide receiver. He was in the pocket in the end zone, so it was a safety. Um, so Presley Harvin kicked it off from the 20, and it landed at, the, at like the 10-yard line of the other team. Like He kicked like a 70-yard kick. <clears throat> which caused the guy to be way too far up, and he had to run back over his shoulder trying to catch the ball, dropped it, picked it up. We wound up getting the ball kicked from R20, and they wound up getting the ball back um, at their, like, 17-yard line. So what a freaking 65- to 70-yard kick from Presley Harvin. That was excellent. I wanted to mention that. Uh, so overall, again, 16-15 win, uh, big drive from Pickett. Mason played solid and got the game-winning touchdown after the Justin Lane interception. Uh, uh, Mason Rudolph to uh, Tyler Sneed, who's another guy fighting for a receiver spot. Anthony Miller's out for the season, so he will not be here anymore. So there is that sixth spot everyone's fighting for. Uh, but that's the game overall. Um, again, the, the biggest takeaways is we're not getting a ton of pressure on the defensive line, and we're, we're not getting any kind of traction for the offensive line. Our quarterbacks are playing well in spite of the fact they're running for their lives and have no chance to do anything, and the running game had nothing to show today. Again, a wide receiver and a quarterback were the two guys with 11 and 10 yards that were leading us in rushing. That is a very scary stat, considering that it was the first stringers all the way through the third quarter that were still getting beat by backup Jaguars. That is not something you want to see, and I am very afraid of that. So we'll see how much they play next week. Next week is the final preseason game for us, the third and final game. Uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a, uh, a lot of the third and fourth stringers uh, we're going to see if they give Trubisky or Pickett any kind of time. Mason's probably going to play a lot. Ola Dukin's going to get a, ch- a chance at some point, probably in the fourth quarter, to play. And we're going to see what happens as far as who's going to make the back end as far as the third running back spot, the uh, five and six wide receiver spots. Uh, see if Connor Hayward locks up the third tight end spot, which it seems like he's likely to do. And we'll see which backup linemen uh, get in there and kind of make their spots known. So, what did you guys think? Who stood out to you? What are your concerns? Obviously, the offensive line. Tell me in the comments below, and if you like these reviews, please let me know so I can do more of these, and I will see you guys next Sunday after the Steelers' final preseason game. Go Steelers!